surrounded by wrestling fans. Not, not sports entertainment fans. Professional wrestling fans. Professional wrestling. This is it. This is us standing up. This is the Wrestling Man's Podcast. A podcast that stands up for professional wrestling. Why? Because wrestling matters. So join the revolution. Because the revolution is now. Well, enough is enough. And it's time for a change. Professional wrestling. This is it. This is us standing up. Yes. 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 That's 1314! Dina, I am the best in the world. Cause that's the bottom line! Cause Stone Cold Simpson! Why, hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, and whoever else is listening to this, welcome, welcome, welcome all to another installment of the Wrestling Matters Podcast. I am your host and creator of this podcast, the one and only, that hates that E to the A to the D, you know me by now, Anthony Walker, at your service for another episode. Now, hope you're all well in what it is you're doing, or whatever it is you are at, hope is all is good, hope there's nothing bad or bad luck coming your way, I kind of had some bad luck this week. Anyway, before I get to that, I'll be talking Raw, a very intense Raw, featuring the best segment in the history of WWE in a while, SmackDown, Impact Wrestling, NXT, and of course, Ring of Honor. I'll be talking about them very later on in the podcast. Now, I have a bit of an apology to make, and I'm going to do this right now as well. I've done it on other things as well, and I've done it on the Progress Wrestling podcast that I eventually got up last week so i will do it here my deepest apologies to everybody as far as the progress wrestling podcast goes you know you might enjoy it i don't know but uh july 21st i had a bit of a trouble yeah hard drive conked out on my laptop that i had yeah it sucks i know i know what you're thinking it sucks but the last time i admit the last time i had my hard drive conk out on me i fucked up because I had a lot of stuff on there, you know. It's very difficult to back up files. I had nothing to back up my files on or whatever, whatever. I'm still getting used to that part. Hopefully, I've now got used to it. But I had nothing to back it up on. There was nothing there, you know. And I fucked that up. I'll admit that. But I did not fuck this one up, okay? Because my computer was running smoothly. It was running smoothly. It was fine. Nothing wrong with the computer. Nothing, no damages towards it or anything like that. It's just July 21st, the early hours of July 21st, while I was watching Monday Night Raw and watching the most epic segment in the history of Raw. More on that later. My hard drive that I got, the replacement that I got, decided to conk out. Now, this was recommended. I bought this on Amazon. It was recommended to me by one of my mum's closest colleagues, uh, colleagues that she works with. Uh, she doesn't work, you know, full time like she used to and all that. She's, I think she volunteers now. Um... But it's pretty much volunteering. He recommended it to me, and then I got it a couple of months ago, and a couple of months later, July 21st, it conks out on me. For what reason, I do not know. So I was pissed, quite frankly, and panicking, because I have a lot of stuff to do, you know? I couldn't wait two weeks for a new computer. I I had a lot of stuff to do. I called an edge a year out. It completely had gone. We had a look at it. He managed to get a look at it as well. It completely had gone. How bad it was, we don't know, and quite frankly, we don't care, because once you turn it on, and you see that the hard drive's not working, on the computer you know what's fuck it's completely gone so i'm a little bit behind on my work thanks to this so i eventually got up i eventually got the podcast up and running the the progress wrestling podcast up and running and the icw podcast with shug's host party by the way hope you enjoyed the uh, shug's host party too which was in st- which was on yesterday uh sunday night july 26 and i'll be reviewing that in a future icw podcast stay tuned but yeah it sucks and usually around this time Something like this always happens to me. I don't know Because my birthday is in August. So, yes, I turned 31 in August, by the way. So, with that being said, ladies and gents, uh, I eventually got my early birthday present. I got myself a new laptop, which I kind of want. I was kind of contemplating getting anyway. Um, getting a new laptop anyway, because that one, to be honest, besides hard drives falling apart in it and shit like that, it, it was kind of on its last leg. So, I've got a brand new, updated updated as much compared to what my mum's got downstairs updated uh computer and it's working a treat at the moment and long may that continue uh i've got some other stuff to do as well 
as far as my Games Matter channel is concerned, I've had to redo my WWE 2K15 career mode, which the first two episodes have already been put out, just to, you know, get everything back up and running again. But I've got a lot of, I've got a bit of catching up to do on that, which I will do. But yeah, everything should be back to normal, and normal service is resumed. But uh, that's one thing that really gets on my fucking nerves about computers, guys, is the fact that they always fucking conk out. Well, hard drives at the most. Especially when you bought a hard drive to replace it. The old one that you fucked up, you know, <laughs> and you expect that to work okay, it conked out. I just think the hard drive that I've conked out, that I had to rep cause me to get a new computer, that hard drive actually was more, it's supposed to be more better than the one I brought previously, but turned out it wasn't especially when it goes off and conks out like that say so, you know the hard drive bar wasn't full I usually previous times I've had the hard drive bar on your computer when you look on the computer segment on your computer and you see the hard drive bar usually the times I've had it full and that's what's caused it to fuck up but this time I hadn't because it was it was small towards the end and plus when I go halfway when I go over halfway up until the point up until the point of it got conking out, I've always cleaned it. I've always like shrunk, shrunk it down a bit so it doesn't go that way. But you know, needs must and all that. But I've got a lot of backup, and, and apparently on this computer that I've got, this laptop that I'm using right now, which is I believe Asus, which is A S U S or oh, Ensus or whatever. Damn these foreign uh, words. Anyway, apparently, Ace. I believe it's Asus. To be honest, I knew it would come to me eventually. Apparently, this one I can store things pretty much anywhere I want, as long as it's not causing to block my hard drive kind of thing. There's ways that I can do that. I need to figure that out though. At the moment, right now, I've got my trusty hard drives, my two trusty hard drives. Since my third one, I had conked out on me for no reason. But anyway, other than that, everything is back up, and I'm bringing new podcasts each and every week. And see, I don't let this happen, okay? I know there's, it's, I, I know guys, there's going to be at one point I'm going to go on holiday and I might not be able to bring your podcast and I might have to miss a week. But God damn it, I, April 7th, like I've said many, many times, April 7th last year, I dedicated myself to bring you the best podcasts that I can be. I have gone from once a week to now three times a week and I aim to bring you the best possible podcast and I am dedicated to bringing you not only the best podcasts that I can bring you but the best in professional wrestling. Why? Because wrestling matters and it matters to me. So with that being said ladies and gentlemen I'll take a time out and then when I come back uh, I'll bring you the Raw review in what was an absolute epic Monday Night Raw for one segment at least and plus I'll throw a pipe bomb in there as well. Cause I want to talk to I want to talk about something during that as well. But after this, I'll bring you. After this quick break, I'll bring you the raw review. So stay tuned. Be sure to tune in every single Tuesday now for the Wrestling Matters Podcast Extra, where I'll be hosting a podcast on one promotion and one promotion only. I C W Insane Championship Wrestling, the hottest promotion in Scotland. Where I'll be reviewing their shows. Oh, oh my God! God! Talking ICW. That's thirteen forty. And who knows? Maybe getting some guests on. So be sure to tune in to the Wrestling Matters Podcast Extra ICW Podcast. Insane Championship Wrestling every Tuesday on YouTube, Podomatic, Stitcher Radio. Download it free at iTunes, Mixcloud, and Soundcloud. Wrestling Matters, wrestling fans. World, look into my eyes. When you see me on a show, when you see these fans, you know you've got the best in the damn world. We are ICW and you're going to know our name. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another, well, to part two of the Wrestling Matters podcast. Now, like I said, guys, we're going to go and talk about Monday Night Raw. But it's going to be a different way this time because I want to talk about the uh, priority and the, you know, the way that Monday Night Raw started and culminated, so to speak. So before I get to the other main points, I want to talk about this one first. And as you probably heard it, yes, I put the pipe bomb intro in this because I got a little bit of a pipe bomb to do as well. So, without further ado, let's get into it. To these two points that I'm going to make. It was always too good to be true for Brock Lesnar that The Undertaker would simply return to the void without properly replying, repaying the beast 
for ending his undefeated streak at WrestleMania 30. And at Battleground, Lesnar's chickens came home to roast when the Phenom cost him the World Heavyweight Championship. So why did the dead man do it? In his first turn on the microphone in more than a year, the Phenom allowed that the snapping of the streak was there. But with Paul Heyman's relentless gloating and disrespect of Undertaker's quarter-century life's work, the last outlaw rode again to cost the Conqueror his only holy grail. That set himself and the Beast 469 days after the end of the streak on a collision course that he promised would end with Lesnar as all men do resting in peace and that will take place at SummerSlam and all of that ladies and gentlemen led to what happened now I'll come back to the others the other segments and talk about them in a wee bit but like I said I put a pipe bomb intro at the beginning of this because I want to talk about what happened during this brawl now with Brock Lesnar barred from the building or so we thought and Paul Heyman standing in the middle of the ring it was all about certainty that Undertaker would target the advocate in attempt to send a message to the one in 22 and 1 it turns out that was just the beast what the beast was waiting for after Heyman lured the last outlaw into the open with some particularly deeming uh, words Lesnar made his move his move instigated a brawl with the dead men that took a squadron of security guards that the entire locker room and ultimately police reinforcement to separate the pair and it also continued backstage as well and then WWE confirmed that these two went to custody for, for starting the fight the Undertaker all charges were dropped and he was ultimately released all charges were dropped. This is just about. This is just something to stop the the uh, the, the SummerSlam main event because these two will meet at SummerSlam in the main event. And what got me about that brawl was it was probably the best thing on Raw in a while. Dare I say the best Raw segment ever? You know what got me about that right was the way it was handled. It was so well done. A straight up brawl, street fight, if you will. Boom, boom. You know statements made and shit like that they brawled all around and every time the the uh, wrestlers and the and the uh, security men tried to separate them they kept on getting back at each other and you could hear them you could hear it was personal I'm gonna kill you you're gonna have to and that made me believe that these two are gonna kick the living cra- beat the living crap out of each other at SummerSlam now I have to admit I have my thoughts about this but if on Raw, if that was any indication of what's going to take place at SummerSlam, then I'm all for this match at SummerSlam. I've got no problem with it. Now, I will say this though, the pipe bomb. During that melee, as Brock came out, you heard a certain Michael Cole say, I'm out of here, and the other two followed, which were Byron Sexton and JBL. It's clear as day that WWE has three pussies on the friggin' announce table. I mean, not that JBL and Michael Cole needed any help, but Byron Saxton, Byron Saxton's only there because Booker T's out doing tough enough. And that's why Jimmy Uso's on SmackDown, I believe. I might, I'm, well, that and the fact that Jey Uso's out injured. So you have to, they'll have to give him something to do. I mean, <laughs> where do I begin with this? The fight took place all around the ring, round ring, in the ring mostly. The brawl and everything and all of that. And then it went outside, but it didn't go anywhere near the announce table. Is Michael Cole... JBL, or should I say, are Michael called JBL and Byron Saxon that much of cowards? They have to leave the scene. Yes, it was chaotic. Yes, it was probably an unsafe working environment. But really? I mean, if I was Triple H, I would have given them three a right bollocking backstage. I mean, because the fight never took place anywhere near the announce table. It went from. If it, if it went to the announce table, then alright. You know? If it was going to go to the announce table, hell, I'd be out there. I wouldn't get in the middle of these two if they were bra- if they were brawling. I wouldn't get in the middle of them. But for God, for goodness sake, man, the more stupidity these three announced the announced team does, it's it, you know it's ridiculous. And they just make it. I mean, not that Michael Cole needs any help in looking stupid, but it you know it's it make them three look complete idiots than they already were. I mean, JBL is probably the worst announcer around at the moment. And that's saying something. I mean, he's not well liked as an announcer. I mean, back in the day in two thousand six, he was good. But I don't know what the fuck he did during that period of time. But anyway, Michael Cole, I don't think anyone likes him, to be honest with you. And Byron Saxton should be on NXT. But like I said, at the end of the day, he's only there on Raw, probably for the summer, because 
or at least until Booker T's finished with Tough Enough. <laughs> the stupid things that announcers do, you know? I, that's why I missed the people like GR and all that, man. All right, GR would have got... But JR would have probably got out of the way eventually, but you know damn well JR would have stayed there and called that mess. I mean, alright, it's probably entirely different, but the brawl with Tyson and Austin. JR didn't run away like a pussy. King didn't run away like a pussy. That's why King should be on war. Yeah, good job putting him on SmackDown. Oh yeah, we'll take King out, you know, and his heart attack and everything. We'll take King out. We'll put King on SmackDown, you know, just to boost the ratings up a little bit. Yeah, you know why? Because SmackDown well and truly sucks. You know, and quite frankly, so does Michael Cole and JBL. But then again, if you listen to this part, previous episodes of the podcast, you already knew that. Anywho, now that's over, I'll talk about the other matches that were on Raw, to the best that I can at least. I'll mention the few and, and all. I'll mention one match as well, which was uh, fed off of what happened on Raw on a battleground since the Intercontinental Championship wasn't defended because of Ryback's injury. Miz knocked out, uh, Big Show knocked out Miz on there and he did exactly the same. He squashed him on Raw. Now, thanks to the uh, New Day, Los Matadores defeated the Tag Team Champions and also Nikki B- Brie Bella's revenge against, revenge, uh, seeking against uh, Charlotte Flair, rather, excuse me did not come to fruition because she again tapped out to the figure eight lock. And after all of that, bear with me, we had Roman Reigns defeat Luke Harper for the reunited uh, wife family, sorry. I mean, I could see this being, like I said to you on the street, on the video that I did for the Wrestling Madness channel over the weekend, this is going to be a tag team match at SummerSlam. Unless they've, unless someone could convince me who's going to join the wide family. Because the aim is, Sting is supposed to be coming to SummerSlam. He's supposed to be in the six-man tag between D-Man, with him, Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns against the wide family. We all know Eric Rowan's injured, okay? Who are they going to fit in? I've heard Bo Dallas, but that's a different issue because, you know, unless they change his gimmick, you know, the whole Bo Dallas thing ain't going to work. But, I mean, Jesus Christ almighty. You know, it really really is I think that, that if I was them until they knew for a fact that both like I said on the stream until they knew for a fact that Eric Rome was going to be available for SummerSlam they'd be best off doing this six man tag at Survivor Series that's the only way they could do it at the moment right now Roman Reigns Dean Ambrose would be best off in a tag match against Luke Harper and uh, Bray Wyatt at SummerSlam that's just my opinion I hope I'm wrong like I said on the street, like I said on the video that I made for the uh, the part for the uh, Wrestling Matters channel. By the way, check out the Wrestling Matters channel and check out that video. It will all be in the description below. Whether you're seeing this on YouTube, SoundCloud, or even OSW TV as well, check it out. So I mean, it's confusing where what direction that's going to go for me anyway. Now, U.S. Champion John Cena confronted the World Heavyweight Champion. Now I don't know where the hell this is going. Thanks to the next big thing thing to the devil himself, Seth Rollins is still the World Heavyweight Champion. But John Cena wasn't buying the Architects version of a victory tour out of Suplex City. As Rollins forced Lillian Garcia Sia to belated announce, belatedly announce his continued tenure as title holder, the C Nation leader and the US Champion made his presence known, laying down what amounted to a challenge for a fight. The undisputed future wasn't too interested, though. It's likely these two have butted heads for the last time. Just I haven't butted heads for the last time just yet. Now I don't know where this is going to go. You know, is it going to be, you know, Seth Rollins, John Cena for the WWE World Title of Survivor at uh, SummerSlam? Rather, I guess it has to be because. Rollins is still the champion, you know, this match, this supposed match between Rollins versus Triple H that everybody was talking about doesn't seem to be going ahead now. There's rumours, there's talk of a baby face for Rollins. I'll tell you what, WWE needs to sort this out and sort it out soon. Uh, team Bad, which was Sasha Banks and Naomi, defeat Paige and Becky Lynch. I think that's a better team than Naomi and Tamina, to be honest with you. That's just my opinion. And a six-man tag, which which ended miserably for Rusev. With six of the WWE's hardest-hitting superstars in the ring at once, who would have thought a diva with a grudge holds decided the fate of the Raw's main event slugfest. It wasn't an attitude adjustment, an RKO, or a neutralizer that carried John Cena, Randy Orton, and Cesaro to victory over Kevin Owens, Rusev, and Sheamus, but instead a shoe to the chest from Lana to Summer Rae. Before that, however, the fan favourites were reeling until 
A miscommunication between Seamus and Owens led the Irishman to walk out, and Owens followed suit after kicking a kicking Rusev in the face. That left Bulgarian Brute all alone to fend off the Viper, but just as Rusev escaped the RKO, Lana arriving, arrived looking for retribution against Summer Rae, who slapped her earlier on in the night. First off came the shoot, then the ravishing Russian pounced, leaving Rusev dumbfounded. When the action resumed, Cena was waiting with an AA, Cesaro followed up with a swing, and finally a slingshot RKO for Mr. Rusev's troubles by the one and only Randy Orton, and Rusev got crushed. And that's how the main event ended. And Raw ended. So, I mean, it's like I say, what's next for this? I'd be interested to see, I mean, Raw, I'm guessing Raw now, up until Smack, uh, SummerSlam at least, it's going to get interesting. The question is, how interesting? And that is the end of the Raw review, ladies and gentlemen. Now, I'll be taking a quick time out, and after this, I'll be back with, you know what, I'll be back with SmackDown review. Right after this, as well as NXT. Both of them this time. So, stay tuned. If you like the Wrestling Matters podcast, why not check out their Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash WM podcast and like the page and show your support to the podcast that stands up for professional wrestling, the Wrestling Matters podcast. Wrestling Matters wrestling fans. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to part three of the Wrestling Matters podcast. That's right. Now, three days after Dean Ambrose helped Roman Reigns fend off Bray Wyatt and Luke Harper on Raw, Sheamus stepped through the ropes to battle the lunatic fringe, calling his opponent reckless, natch, nature of a cowardly way, to try and keep him, to try and keep from facing him. In response, Ambrose agreed with the WWE Universe that Re- Sheamus did in fact look stupid. In the height of the match that followed, Wyatt and Harper interrupted the action. The new face, the self-proclaimed new face of fear, positioned at the ramp and creepily and his creepy ally standing on the announce table. Surrounded Ambrose attempt to go after Harper, only to be levelled by the Celtic Royals' bro kick outside the ring. Sheamus then executed a second dose of his devastating boot for the three count. So you start a, p- a show, so to speak. Uh, Neville beats Dean uh, Adam Rose, rather. Was it Dean Ambrose there? King Barrett addressed the WWE Universe. A re a king, King Barrett. Emerged before his subjects warning one and all that the most crowding moment is still yet to come. What could that be? Rusev defeats Kevin Owens by count out. Not really much. And Owens inventively interrupted the uh, backstage match with the uh, backstage interview with Cesaro. The Divas revolution continued on SmackDown as Brie Bella and Nikki, the Bella twins, battled BAD, Naomi and Sasha. As... Disordered broke, broad, uh, broke out rather outside the ring between Brie, Alicia, Sasha, and Tamina. Divas champion Nikki took down Naomi with a devastating rack attack. And the main event was Cesaro versus Seth Rollins. In the final moments of an absolutely tremendous SmackDown main event between Seth Rollins, Cesaro, a match that took both superstars to their limits, the architect looked ready to take a walk, while his powerful opponent was able to stop him outside the ring with a furious uppercut. Rollins ultimately ultimately found a way to win. As the Swiss Superman was attempting to set up Cesaro's swing, the title holder hit him with a thumb in the eye, hurled him into a steel ring post, and finished off him with a pedigree. As the smoke cleared, Kevin Owens emerged. Unleashing a post-match assault on his fallen on the fallen Cesaro as payback for some jokes the King of Swing made at his expense earlier on in the evening, and that was the end of SmackDown. See, there's not that much now on SmackDown that there used to be. Now for the NXT, Owens crosses the line again. Now, Eva Marie made a debut this week on NXT, like she said she was going to do last week. The total diva star made her highly anticipated return to the ring this week on NXT. Eva Marie looked impressive, showing off agility. <laughs> Staggering strikes and Matt prowess through Cassie stunned the reality TV star with a series of well placed kicks. Even Marie emerged victorious in the end, picking up a win with a mood famous or made famous by a certain Brian Kendrick. Slice bread number two. That one's for you, Brian. Now Baron Corbin defeats local competitor 
Doesn't take long, does it? Hits it with end of days. Some more Joe defeats Michael Rawless, another newcomer. NXT newcomer tried to stand toe to toe with Samoan Joe. <laughs> more fool him. But only drew the fury of the Samoan spe the submission specialist, the Samoan submission machine. Joe pummeled uh, Mike before getting the three count with a tremendous muscle buster. Bailey returned too and went one on one with Emma. At the start of the bout, Emma drew the eye the eye of Bailey, luring the ch cheerly diva into a trap that led her to to taking control. When it looked like ba as if Bailey was bouncing back, Emma targeted the injured hand, ramming it into the ring post and turnbuckles before wrenching away at the fingers. Despite the damage done to her hand, Bailey showed tremendous heart in fighting through the pain. Dana Brooke tried to swing the match back in Emma's favour, but was thrown out by the official. With the odds evened, Bailey earned a half heart victory with a Bailey to belly suplex. And after the match, she wanted the women's title, which is held by, uh, which was held by Sasha Banks. But she knew she had to go through an obstacle to get there, and that one was Charlotte Flair. So Bailey and Charlotte coming soon, I guess. Also, I guess the rumors were true. August twenty second, guys, international super, super international superstar. Juice and Thunder Ligo will appear at the NXT TakeOver in Brooklyn. So that's something to look forward to. I can't wait for that. You may have seen him in TNA, you may have seen him in the Ring of Honor as well. And plus other promotions all over. Well, he's coming to NXT. A new breed of indie wrestling-ish. Fresh off earning the number one contendership for the Tag Team Championships, English and Gotch set out to prove why they're worthy of challenging Blake and Murphy for the tag titles. They faced much larger opposition, though, in the duo of Dawkins and Fulton. The Vaudevillains showed off their aggressive new attitude in the ring, not backing down despite the size disadvantage they faced. The manly du duo picked up the win after clocking Dawkins with the whirling devilish. Could the same fate await Blake and Murphy? Now, NXT champion and the contract signing for Brooklyn, because these two are going to have their rematch in Brooklyn August, in August. Now, the tension in the re in arena was, was at a fever pitch as Bala and Owens arrived to put pen to paper on the contract for their championship rematch August 22nd in Brooklyn, coming face to face for the first time since their battle in Japan, in Tokyo. Owens said he was going to prove that the first encounter was a fluke, while the NXT champions seemed unfazed by the challenger's boosts. But once the names were on the contract, things turned sour, as Owens tossed the table in Bala at Bala rather, and slammed his face and slammed his face into it when William Regal tried to control things. The bruiser struck the NXT general manager with a big right hand. Owens tried to hit the NXT champion with a pop-up powerbomb, but Bala sent him retreating with a flying forearm and a dropkick. Through he was able to escape this time. Bala won't let Owens get away in Brooklyn, though. That easy. And that's the end of the review there. And I'll be back with part three, guys, with TNA. Main points, so stay tuned. sure to tune in each and every Wednesday for the Progress Wrestling Podcast. That's right, each and every week on Wednesdays, for the time being at least, I will be reviewing their shows from their on-demand service, Demand Progress. So be sure to check out the hottest promotion to come out of London. That's right, it's Progress Wrestling. This is Progress. This is a podcast on Progress. Every Wednesday on SoundCloud, YouTube, OSW TV, and every other podcasting site that matters. Be sure to check it out. Wrestling matters, wrestling fans. Welcome back to part four, ladies and gentlemen, of the Wrestling Matters podcast. That's right. Now, I'll just get on with it. It's time for the TNA main talking points. Now, Dixie Carter enters the Impact Zone with an announcement of the 2015 Hall of Fame inductee. She says, while many are worthy, this is one that stands alone. Carter gives... Way to a graphic of a guitar and Proverbs 3.14. Proverbs 3.14. 
for wisdom is more prof profitable than silver, and her wages are better than gold. The inductee is revealed. It's the GFW owner, Jeff Jarrett. TNA recognizes Jeff Jarrett as one of the greatest wrestlers in the modern era, a visionary promoter and a dedicated family man. To a critic, no explanation will do. To a fan, no explanation is needed. Jeff Jarrett, TNA. Hall of Fame. It's kind of predictable, that wasn't it, really? But anyway, Street Fight with Bram and Magnus ends with a post-match beatdown from a cowbell with James Storm. And let's just say this feud between James Storm and Magnus, I don't think is over. I mean, I thought James Storm left TNA. I know TNA's recording in that, but Jesus. His name is Eli Drake. A recap is shown of Eli Drake's shocking turn on, on Drew Galloway during last week's main event. Drake says, my name is Eli Drake, and Eli Drake is, has waited a long time to stand here by himself. He says his motive was simple. He's not a victim of criticism. He's a creator of them. He elaborates by saying that all of his decisions must create circumstances. Let me, let me rephrase that again. That was circumstance. That my bad. He is not a victim of circumstance. He is a victim. He's a creator of them. He elaborates by saying his decision must create circumstance that the advantages to him. He says Galloway got him in the door, but kept blabbering about people standing up. And as far as I'm concerned, you can all sit down. He says Mika is a puppet that he did was instructed. He reminds the audience that his name is Eli Drake before wondering who'd have even known that beyond all the talking Galloway did he said he used Galloway and the rising for everything he could. Drake says he'll just like every fan. He claims everyone called it has called in sick at least once while perfectly healthy. That everyone has pyristic friends ships and that some of the women in the attendance are in relationships because they they're the men pay their bills strong stuff sorry for that there's too much there was a lot to uh, read there drake says he that Jake says that as long as he is standing galloway will never be tna world heavyweight champion drew enters in response drew says he recruited drake because he knew he had color instinct he says he underestimated that instinct and that Drake's betrayal hurt him more than anything throughout his 15-year career. Galloway asks the fans what he should do about the betrayal. A. Kick ass. Trent erupts. Galloway, allow, uh, Galloway vows to make Eli Drake famous. Galloway takes Drake to the mat and pummels him with a series of elbows. Drake shifts the momentum and swings his crutch. Galloway ducks and sets up for the future check DDT, but Drake escapes. This is not over. Tyrene Terrell is a little bit pissed off and came out and was angry at Brooke and swanted her dub TNA title back. So Tyrene went after so what Tyrene went after Brooke. Lo and behold, the lights went out. And the dollhouse was still in the ring, in this cage. But so was Gail Kim. Gail Kim locks the door. Doll, the dolls locked it. The, the, the dolls are in the ring. Gail Kim locks the gate, the cage, and proceeds to beat the dolls up in the cage. Everything disappears. Gail Kim leaves. Let's go out. Gail leaves. Message sent to the dollhouse. A replay of Slammiversary. The King of the Mountain match, that is. Tigre Uno talks Trump and calls out. Donald Trump. Tigre Uno invited the, impact, the Donald Trump to the impact zone next week, vowing to show him what a good and real hard-working Mexican is. Will Trump show up? Revolutions one woman. Turns out to be Sunita. Or Serena, rather. Serena is back and looks like she's here to help Mag uh, here to help James Storm in this feud between him and Magnus. So will we see a mixed tag match? Guess we'll see. Rockstar Spud gets beat by Eric Young in a chain match. Spud crawls between Young's legs and yanks the chain into a low blow. Spud uses the chain to clothesline Young before returning the lashes. Spud climbs to the top of the turnbuckle only to see the referee shoved in his direction. Young pulls Spud off to the mat, delivers a power drive and gets the win. And the main event was Bobby Roode and Matt Hardy in the number one contenders table match. Which saw Rude attempt a Rude bomb, but Hardy, Hardy counters by sending Rude flying over the top rope. Rude crashes through the table at ringside, and Matt becomes the number one contender for EC3's world title. Question is, 
can he beat EC3? And that is the end of the TNA main talking points there, ladies and gentlemen. Quick little thing, lot to get through. And uh, with that being said, I'll be back after this with Ring of Honor's main talking points. A very short Ring of Honor this week for the 2000 episode, considering, well, the 200 episode rather, considering there was only one match. But I'll be back after this break to talk about it. So stay tuned. If you like the Wrestling Matters Podcast, why not follow the Wrestling Matters Podcast now on Twitter, at WM Podcast, for all professional wrestling news. Wrestling Matters, wrestling fans. Welcome back, everybody, to part five of the Wrestling Matters Podcast. Now it's time for the Ring of Honor review. Now, nothing much went down on Ring of Honor except one match this week, and the match that went down was an eight-man, eight-person tag match. They basically showed the best of Ring of Honor, to be honest. It was showing the addiction winning the tag team titles off Red Dragon, which was Chris Sabin's debut. They played a video of Scum... Uh, an out, a cage match between Team Ring of Honor and Team Scum, which Kevin Steen won to kill his own creation, which, as we know, he was the founder of Scum, but then they broke up and he went out the group, and they had a match which Steve Carino was a part of because he was a part of Scum, and they killed Scum. They also had a look back at the Top Prospect tournament, which Donovan Dijak won. They showed a match from Tag Wars involving... Uh, Red Dragon and Seidel and ACH, which Dragon won. Then they showed what happened in a match between AJ Styles and Hanson from War Machine, which AJ Styles won. And they also showed a match involving going back to, I believe, when they started showing this on YouTube, uh, Mike Bennett and Lance Storm from 2012. The match with Hanson and uh, Styles was, I think, towards the end of 2013. And then all that came about, and then... They show they eventually went to the mat, the main event of the evening, which was House of Truth, Dijak, Jay Diesel, Jay Lethal, and Truth Martini versus Briscoes, Roderick Strong, and ODB. Now, Truth breaks dances in the ring, why I don't. He and ODB start, that is until Truth tags Lethal, but ODB tags Strong, and then Lethal tags Dijak. Dijak has a power advantage, quickness with strong as he hits a drop kick a leg drop kick that is strong teams strong's team look to isolate Dijak Briscoe's double team jibe Dijak Mark hits an elbow off the second rope as ROH goes to break back from break Dijak suplexes Mark lethal on the attack that he gets tagged in House of Truth look to isolate Mark Briscoe Stomp gets lethal a near fall elbow gets Dijak a near fall Mark in trouble but fights back Mark gets tagged Fight back on. Dijak rocking gets a boot. Then neck breaker. Jay gets a near fall off that. House of Truth look to slow down Jay Briscoe. Uh, Jay fights back. Numbers game with House of Truth though. Diesel suplexes Jay Briscoe gets a near fall. House of Truth controlling Jay Briscoe. Lethal slowing down Briscoe. Hits a clothesline gets a near fall. House of Tru- Truth in control as ROH goes to break. Back from the break, Jay fighting back, hits a DVD on Diesel. Jay tags Strong and as he unloads on Jay Lethal. Strong hits Slam Dunk, which is the uh, five minutes carry into a gut buster, and then hits his running kick move and gets a near fall. Match breaks down, ODB gets tagged in. Truth stops that, ODB in trouble as House of Truth surround her. ODB fights back, Truth gets... ODB fights off the truth, sorry, gets stopped, a brawl erupts, all eight in the ring at the same time. Mark dives on, Mark Briscoe dives on Jay Diesel, Jay Briscoe dives on Donovan Dijak, Lethal dives on Jay Briscoe, Strong hits a mid-rope drop kick on the outside, and then Lethal, onto Lethal, and then Truth rolls up ODB for near fall. ODB speeds Spits her drink in the face of Truth, rolls him up and gets the win for the team. So yeah, it was a chaotic eight-man tag, but uh, a good eight-man, eight-person tag rather, and a good eight-person tag though to end the 200th episode of Ring of Honor. And my congratulations to Ring of Honor for reaching Ring on for well for Ring of Honor Television at least for reaching 200 episodes and more of Ring of Honor next week. Also, uh, just a little quick note as well: Addiction retained the tag team titles. This was a death before. Dishonor. Addiction retained the tag belts and Roderick Strong and Jay Lethal went to a 60 minute draw which apparently was match of the year apparently at least according to the crowd so a few little matches there for you to get in and with that being said ladies and gentlemen I will take a quick break and I'll be back with the final part of the Wrestling Matters podcast so stay tuned Be sure 
sure to tune in every single Tuesday now for the Wrestling Matters Podcast Extra, where I'll be hosting a podcast on one promotion and one promotion only. I C W Insane Championship Wrestling, the hottest promotion in Scotland. Where I'll be reviewing their shows. Oh, oh my God! God! Talking ICW. That's thirteen fourteen. And who knows? Maybe get some guests on. So be sure to tune in to the Wrestling Matters Podcast Extra ICW Podcast. Insane Championship Wrestling every Tuesday on YouTube, Podomatic, Stitcher Radio, downloaded free at iTunes, Mixcloud, and Soundcloud. Wrestling Matters, wrestling fans. World, look into my eyes. When you see me on a show, when you see these fans, you know you've got the best in the damn world. We are ICW and you're going to know our name. If you like the Wrestling Matters podcast, why not check out their Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash WM podcast and like the page and show you support to the podcast that stands up for professional wrestling, the Wrestling Matters podcast. Wrestling Matters wrestling fans. Welcome back everyone to the final part of the Wrestling Matters podcast. Now before I go, I've got a few things that I want to promote and mention to you guys before I forget. Uh, Be sure to check out the Wrestling Matters podcast affiliates that's right they are osw tv you can check them out on youtube on on a facebook rather at oh not facebook fucking hell twitter at osw tv and check out billy strachan the voice of osw tv at the voice of osw so be sure to check them out as well also be sure to check out our rfpw official on twitter the guy a uh, great guy good lad check him out He's been helping me with my website as well, and he's helped him there. I'm, I'm this close to getting my website up and back up and running again. But as you well know, I've done a lot. Of, there's been a lot of things that have happened, so it's had to be on hold for the time being. Be sure to check out my boys at Sunday Segway, my guys, my partners in crime, my backup, if you will. Sunday Segway, Kenny and them, I love them the bits, and it's always nice to be on their show, even though they do sometimes bring me on at the last minute. But hey, at least I get on the show, and that's all that matters to me. Also, be sure to check out. Uh, at Irish Commodity on Twitter as well, Vicky O's. Be sure to check her out. Show her some love. She's an absolute sweetheart. And, uh, yeah, she's a really nice girl, no doubt. And you will get to know her. And, of course, she loves wrestling because she's a search head. Be sure to check out at, at, at Tim Vicious, at Axel Mulligan as well. Two great guys. Uh, Darren Dyer, be sure to check his YouTube page out. I'm sure his YouTube page will be on there at some point. On his Twitter page as well. And um, Also... Be sure to check out Offshoot Radio. That's right, my guys at Offshoot Radio. James Belmont, JX2001 JX on Twitter. Yes, my my arch nemesis, especially when it comes to Beat the Clock. After what he did to me last time, Mr. TNA himself. The Professor Mike Rodriguez, be sure to check him out. And the gorgeous Roxy herself. That's right, that Roxy girl on Twitter. Be sure to check all them out. And also at Offshoot Radio as well for the show for any more information, news and whatever as well. And check out The Alter Dangle at The Alter Dangle on Twitter. Pepper and Josh Dillon as well, two great guys, super cool guys. Hopefully we can get them back on again on the podcast in the future. Also, ladies and gentlemen, TWT Wrestling is coming to Middlesbrough. I'm trying to get in touch with them, but it's difficult at the moment. Um, But I will do my damnedest to get in touch and bring you the information that is needed. So until then, at the official TWT, facebook.com forward slash TWT Wrestling. Also, be sure to check out EPW in the coming weeks as well. They've got some shows coming up. One particular in Newcastle, which I don't understand, but hey, I don't really give a damn. But hey, they're coming to Newcastle. They're coming to other places as well. So be sure to check them out. Facebook.com forward slash EPW American Wrestling. I will promote the Twitter page, but I don't think he can even work a Twitter page, to be fair, but hey, but for more information, go to the Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash EPW American Wrestling. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, be sure to check out the ICW podcast and the Progress Wrestling podcast. Everything is back to normal now, and I'll be damned if it isn't. Thank you so much for understanding, and thank you so much for your continued support. Facebook.com forward slash WM Podcast. Like the page, show your support to the most fun and entertaining podcast that doesn't stand up for sports entertainment, but stands up for professional wrestling. Why? Because wrestling matters. I don't give a damn about sports entertainment on this program. All I care about is the one word, and the one word that matters. Wrestling. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Anthony Walker, the HD, the the D, to the D, well, saying, see ya. Well, enough is enough, and it's time for a change. 
professional wrestling. This is it. This is us standing up. Yes. 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 That's 1314. Tell that. Dina, I am the best in the world. Cause that's the bottom line! Cause Stone Cold Simpson!